Welcome. I'm Kinetic Symphony. I hunt down and report on mysterious and weird true stories, from glitches to the paranormal. Case file number 329, written by Quest Prod. Cars from out of this world. I'd like to start by saying I was never one to believe in the Matrix or anything of the sort until this experience. I'm trying to come to some sort of explanation aside from a glitch, but I have not been able to find any resolution to this. It's not scary, spooky, or some time traveler thrown through space-time to our dimension or timeline. It's just odd. I was driving through the streets near my house at around 9.30pm, so it was dark and oddly quiet for a weekend night. I live in a college town in Southern California with a vibrant nightlife, so not seeing a single car or pedestrian for the first three miles on a major road was extremely unusual. I didn't think much of it until I came down a large hill and around the bend at the bottom. It was a sweeping left bend with a speed limit of 45 miles per hour. I saw tail lights ahead, right at the end of the bend. I noticed I was getting closer fast and checked my speed, 45 miles per hour. I slowed down quickly and approached the cars ahead of me. I slowed down from 45 to 10 miles per hour. The cars were stopped. No stoplight, stop sign, accident, hazard, animal. There was nothing there. No reason to stop. I realized they were all stopped in perfectly spaced out intervals, alternating between the left and right lane. I felt an odd sensation through my body, like a static vibration. What I would compare it to is TV static emanating from my bones the closer I crept up to the cars. All the cars were vehicles that did not come with a manual option, so they were all automatic transmission vehicles, None of the cars had brake lights on, stopped without engaging brakes. The sounds of the cars were non-existent. As I pulled up next to the car in the left lane, I crept up to look at the person in the car and as soon as I broke that perfectly spaced out interval, all the cars began moving at once. No engine starting, no gears being changed, no handbrakes being disengaged, just a sudden movement by all seven cars. There was no slinky effect, like traffic always has. All seven cars, front to rear, began moving at the exact same time. That static feeling I had wore off the further I got from where the cars had stopped. I passed the cars once I had a chance and all the drivers were expressionless, did not look over at me, did not show any sign of acknowledgement of me or what just happened. Is this anything any of you could give insight to or know of happening? Thanks. Case Notes Okay, so... I wonder if everyone else is going to get this vibe too, but for me I'm just getting the vibe of aliens, woohoo, <laughs> we're back to that. So really, this isn't an abduction or time loss or anything like that, it's just a bunch of cars with passengers that don't even seem like they're human, they're almost robotic. If I was an alien and I wanted to study people, I would program androids that looked exactly like humans and then send them down to collect data, live among us, maybe that's what this is. Maybe those cars were created by aliens in that spot and the androids were just loaded into it and sent off like programs scattering across the country just to see what's around. There's only so much you can learn in a spaceship, right? Even with the advanced technology, you want to get down on the ground. But you can't do that if you're a freaky looking alien. <laughs> Case file number 330, written by Prometheus Titan God. I think me and my friend crossed over into another universe. This happened about 25 years ago. We regularly went to a festival in the mountains of Pennsylvania every year. I went with my friend, Tom. We camped out and had a small bonfire, etc. We enjoyed our favorite music from our favorite bands and we had a great time. We have been doing this for almost 10 years at this time. So we were experts in preparing for a 5 to 6 hour drive, setting up the campsite, doing the breaking down and leaving, etc. We stayed up late every night playing music and doing our nightly ritual of burning all paper trash and anything trash wise that was non-toxic in the campfire, so that there was less trash to clean up when we left. We jokingly called it combustibles, and would yell or chant as we would throw some on. <laughs> yeah, I know, we were young and dumb. This is important for later. At one point, one of us put a buck of something on the fire and it stunk. It burned an off color and put off a lot of smoke. So much for being not toxic, I thought. Well, we both got a lung full and coughed, but we're fine. We didn't realize the time. It was almost three, so I thought I was going to sleep. 
We planned to leave for home at like 5 a.m. to beat the traffic leaving. It was a very popular festival and was packed. So I said, why not pack everything up now and we can sleep in the car for an hour or so, and then we can go. We packed up quickly, then since I was driving, I said let's leave now to get to a rest stop on the parkway, then sleep in the car if we are tired, avoiding traffic totally. For Tom, it was a no-brainer. He wasn't driving. He could just sleep on the way back till it was his turn to switch. We got like 30 to 45 minutes on the parkway. When I started to doze off at the wheel, swerving almost killing us several times while Tom passed out, sleeping in the passenger seat. So I woke him and said, we need a switch or something. We came to a rest stop, decided to park, get cool drinks and sleep in the car for a while. This is when it happens. Tom goes inside to get drinks and piss or something. The next thing I know, I'm driving in five lane traffic an hour and a half away from home. I didn't wake up as if I was just waking up from a dream. I was just in one moment, one frame and then into another. My eyes were wide open, dry, like they weren't even blinking. I didn't know where we were at first or what the fuck happened. I looked over at Tom. His eyes were wide open. I mean like wide open, staring straight ahead. I yelled at what happened, where we were. I got no response. I yelled at him again. He then slowly looked over at me to say what in a slow way. He said, why are you waking me up? I said, you weren't sleeping. It took us the rest of the drive home to grasp what happened. We traveled a four hour span of roads in less than two hours. We at the time had no memory of leaving the rest stop. I only faintly remember him coming back to the car and he only vaguely recalls coming back to the car, so it wasn't because I was sleeping. He was awake in the rest stop and he couldn't remember either. Several other things were off, besides the CD player being on and had played through all the songs and was stopped, meaning a CD was put in and was played, ran through the album and reached the end. We have no memory of that as well. Another thing, we should have needed to stop for gas before that point, because when I left I was low. We apparently either put gas in or traveled that entire way without using hardly any gas and my brakes before were fine now. They were grinding like metal on metal. We talked about it for years after. He is a hardcore skeptic of anything beyond his religion. He concluded we must have inhaled too much toxic smoke at the campsite and I went into autopilot driving while he slept, but kept telling him he wasn't sleeping. He was in a trance staring straight ahead with a frozen look on his face. I don't think it was aliens because it was a bright sunny clear day with lots of people around. A few years ago, we talked about it more. He admitted to the fact he wasn't sleeping. He was staring straight ahead when he came around. We started to remember more. I started to remember him getting back to the car and me insisting I was okay to drive because I had a cold drink. So we drove out of the rest stop. After that it was fuzzy, then for him, that is all he will admit to remembering, but for myself. I started to remember something that gives me goosebumps as I write this still. I remember nodding off, then being awakened by the sound of branches hitting the car, then the feeling of falling in the car, then a hard splash, then I saw in a bloody haze, water, seeing my friend convulsing from lack of air while waking up from being unconscious. Now I need to say that at the time of this I had no clue about quantum immortality glitches in the matrix or Mandela effects. It was the late 90s of my remembering and the early middle 90s when it actually occurred. I wanted to believe it was a false memory. So a few years back I went on Google Earth, something that I didn't have back then. And when I traced the route after the rest stop, there is a huge bridge that crosses over a major river. And yes, if you look, it's possible if someone drove off the road going fast enough, you would hit small trees and then a big drop into the water. Seeing this freaked me out bad. I sat back and said, gosh, I think we died. Then, a few years back, I learned about glitches and quantum immortality after having some major experiences. Then it all made sense to me. We switched realities. It explains everything. Why my brakes were suddenly fixed. Why little things were off. And the other thing, many of my close friends changed personalities. I wouldn't go into details, but it seemed like after that ride home, the world was different. Close friends weren't close anymore. I'm a huge MacGyver fan and have never missed an episode. I was watching it online and saw two episodes that never existed before for me. 
Sure, I could have missed them, but I don't think so. But I actually recorded them on VHS back then, collecting the episodes so I knew each one. But this Prometheus Syndrome, I don't know. Truly freaked me out. Big on mythology and my fellow titans, especially Prometheus. So an episode where Mac actually talks about Prometheus. Yeah, I would have remembered that. The truly disturbing thing was the empty deal look in my friend's face and eyes after he convulsed underwater was the same look I saw when I asked what happened, where are we, when we woke up in this reality. I don't know what happened for sure, but it disturbs us both. Bonus file, written by Mr. Nice Guy 35 This rocking chair must have pissed off a ghost. To provide some quick background, our house has always had weird vibes to it. My boys have both claimed to have experienced things, and my wife and I have seen things as well. Last night, I put down our youngest, a little rocking chair, mine from when I was a toddler, was seated against his wall. I was sitting on the floor in front of it. The room was dark except for a nightlight. After he was sleeping, I left the room, shut the door, and walked downstairs to the kitchen. About a minute or two later, definitely less than five minutes, I heard a bang from above me where his room was located. My wife, who was upstairs at the time, texted me asking what that was. I said I had no idea. Our son ran out of the room and found my wife, terrified. The small rocking chair was in the middle of the floor, upside down. It had moved, somehow, about five feet, and flipped forward. I know he was sleeping as I checked before I left the room, and the movement and sound happened within a five-minute span. My wife was on the same floor of the house, and would have told me if she was involved somehow, or if his brother had somehow entered the room. His brother was sleeping at the same time as well. We eventually calmed him down and got him back to sleep. It was crazy, to say the least. 